this again. To be honest with you, I'm not sure if I'm getting out. Um, there we go. Sorry for the for the technical difficulty. Um, this is uh, Scott with Pray5.org. Uh, this is Shorts with Scott. Uh, glad you're here. This is number 17. Number 17, week 17. Hey, if you have any questions or any uh, or any que yeah, questions you'd like to ask, just send them to me at pray5org at gmail.com. It's pray5org at gmail.com. Uh, these will be posted on my YouTube site, and they will be posted on the pray5.org website, and of course, obviously here on Pray Five uh, on Facebook. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Uh, on the questions. Again, I'm, I'm getting kind of used to having a little bit different genre in the questions and how they're coming. I'm getting asked questions from people that are everybody from uh, women who are, are, have questions on doctrinal statements to an 11-year-old children that have asked me questions. It's like, okay. And when the, the, I get asked questions, I get honest questions that deserve an answer. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started, shall we? This one is on, does the Bible talk about, this is a, a two-part question, I'm going to squeeze it together like I did last week on, the, on one of these. Smartphones, smartwatches, computers, uh, are they part of prophecy? Yes. Now, there is, it's, what it is, it says that the knowledge in these, in the end times, knowledge will increase. It's not just saying, hey, we're getting, you know, getting more technology. Men are actually, mankind is actually getting more stupid as we get along, as we go further into history, not smarter. We have more technology. But the pyramids were built without a computer, with men's minds, and we can't figure it out with computers. Okay, you can do the math. Okay, so smartphones, computers, uh, is, is this part of prophecy? Yes. And if we look in uh, Daniel 12, 4, he says, during these end times, men will go to and fro seeking uh, information and also uh, that the knowledge will increase exponentially. And in the last, if you look at history, used to when you double in the amount of knowledge worldwide would take you know, 100 to 200 years. Well, now in the last 150 years, it's gotten down to where it's in weeks if not just a couple of months, but very short period of time because the computers are talking to each other. So that's part of prophecy. And that'll be used because AI and all the different things that are going on are in here as far as, as far as uh, like for instance, uh, the beast, when he goes into the Holy of Holies, he'll have a statue that will speak and kill people, okay? So we're thinking that might be AI also. Plus AI, doesn't have, they don't have souls, so therefore there's no issue with the demon taking over them. Will the world be able to use this to track us? And why would they? Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, which is a go-to. Uh, 13, verse 16 and 17. Verse, six, verse 16 and 17. And he, this is Satan, or the Antichrist, causes, he says he, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on the back of their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast and or the number of his name. Okay, you have to not only take the mark, but you also have to bow and worship his image. Okay, so he's going to have some kind of image that pro uh, prohibits people from buying and selling. Okay, it's gonna be some kind of computerized uh, chip or something, but it's gonna it's gonna represent with the number of six six six, okay? Because it says it right there. The number of the, the number of the beast is six six six. So how that's put on there and how it means, we don't know yet. There's different speculation, but no one knows for sure. But but be known that if you take the mark, you will lose your soul during that time. And it, that's, the mark isn't required until three and a half years into the tribulation. So. Again, look at uh, start looking at uh, Revelation 11 through 13. And that'll explain that. Okay. Next question is, the symbols that we see famous people using on shows, do they mean anything? Yes. 
Uh, you see, I'm going to use the symbol for strictly for demonstration purposes only. I know some, you know, somebody may take a picture of this and say, hey, look, this guy's doing demonic symbols. No, they use the triangle. They put the triangle together like a pyramid. You look on the back of the dollar bill, what's it have? It has a pyramid with an all-seeing eye. We've always been told from way back that that was God looking around the earth. No, that's a, a Masonic symbol. You have the, the, the pyramid, which is uh, one of the signs of, of, of paganism, and the all-seeing eye is not the all-seeing eye of God, See, it's Satan. That's that's a demonic symbol. Uh, so when they're showing the pyramid, and they're looking through it. That's showing who they belong to. Uh, the other one is where they cover up one eye, either with, with a with an object or something like that, and take a picture of it, and it's real obvious. The all-seeing eye. Uh, also, when they do the okay, you know, this means okay when you're underwater. Say, I'm fine. I'm okay. I can breathe. Okay. Well, when they do that, and then they they throw out the three fingers. That is, and they flip it around, it shows 666. That's another symbol. And you're saying, well, you're just putting, you're just, you're just making that up. Go online, look at Beyonce, look at all the, the ones who are, are followers of Satan who claim that they've sold their soul to Satan. And they're doing one of those symbols, they're showing the public who they belong to. Like, like that one guy, that one rapper who wears all red and devil eyes and put a had a Nikes, 666 Nikes, and had a drop of human blood in them and everything. Come on. That is, that's the symbols of Satan that they're, they're obviously trying to. Just like the pentagram and the, the, the different things they have, but the famous people on stage using the triangle, the OK sign with the three, you know, with the three uh, fingers out, meaning, you know, the 666, uh, the one eye, meaning the all seeing eye. Okay. So, yes. And they're, they're, very open about it. I mean, it's not like they're trying to hide it. Uh, is there reincarnation? Is there any reincarnation? No. In, um, make sure that, yep, is there reincarnation? And the answer to that is no, because it says uh, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says it's once for a person to die, and then there's the judgment. If you're an unbeliever and you die, then you go to hell and wait for your judgment, which is, the unbelievers, the the, the uh, white throne judgment of uh, uh, Revelation chapter twenty verse eleven, where sit, that's at the end of the, at the millennial reign when Christ brings up all the dead from the sea and Hades and and brings them in to be judged. That's the unbelievers' judgment. When a believer dies, they go straight to judgment. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Is referring to the believer. So no, there is no reincarnation. Think about it. What if you were reincar if reincarnation was true? We have problems. What if in the first life you were a really good person and accepted Christ and everything, and in your second life you were a satanic worshiper? Would you lose your soul from being good the first time through your life and then see the, see the problem? Okay, it's kind of like uh, when I talk to my friends who are Hindu or uh, Buddhist. They believe in reincarnation and they believe in the, the all the that you you evolve up or down according to your karma. Well, their only problem with that is, is number one, who keeps track of that? <laughs> who keeps track of your good, your bad, and then who makes the decision of which way you, you know, whether you go up or down, and which just you know, puts you in that your soul in that in that slot? They can't answer that. And number two, who did their, your first karma when you first showed up? Who determined which where, where you would be coming in in the first place? If it was just random, that doesn't make sense. So therefore, they don't have. They can't answer. They don't, they're atheists. They don't believe in God. They believe in energy, you know, a force. Okay, real quickly, um, those are the four questions, but the 11-year-old kid who looked me square in the face and asked me a question said, if God knew Satan sinned and he knew Adam and Eve were on the earth and they didn't sin yet, then why'd he allow Satan to tempt or to, yeah, to, to deceive Eve into sinning? How old are you? <laughs> You're, I said, where'd you get this question? And he said, I'm just thinking about it. Uh, so I actually, I asked, I said, well, think about it. Satan was was created out of nothing, the most high angel, where Michael the archangel is, Satan, who was called Lucifer then, hadn't fallen yet, he hadn't sinned yet, but then he determined that he needed to, wanted to be God. So his sin was the sin of pride. And it actually 
caused him to be thrown out of heaven along with, and he convinced one third of the angels to follow him. So he sinned and then God set up hell in the lake of fire for him and his angels, not for humans. So when God created the human race, they also had to have free will. We, we had to have free will because to be able to truly love somebody, you have to have a choice whether to love or not to love. And so what happened was they had to make a choice when God said, don't eat of that. They had the entire garden to eat whatever they wanted to, just falling off the branches. But Satan convinced them that, oh, God's trying to keep something from you. That one, that one tree out of all the tens of thousands of trees, he's trying to keep something from you. So you're when you have a... Just like when you throw out a, a a a piece of or you get a bag of rice and you throw it out on the ground and put it all together and it's all you know light colored and you put one dark colored grain in there, what do you notice? You notice the dark grain. You don't notice the rest. You don't notice the thousands of, of clean, clean grains. Well, that's what he did. Was he he convinced them to look at you know look at he's trying to keep something from you. So he had to judge and allow the temptation to be there just like he allowed Satan to build and make his own mind up. But the, the cost is obviously the lake of fire if you reject. Uh, another question, and I'll go ahead, and this is makes six, so I'm going to throw a bonus in here. I know we're early. Uh, I'm going to plagiarize this one. I'm going to, I'm going to take this from uh, Frank Turek, Dr. Frank Turek from uh, Cross Examine. He had a there was a, um, at one of the universities, he had a, a, a doctor or, or some kind of medical professional come up during his, one of his uh, uh, speaking engagements and asked him, he said, I didn't, he said, I did not choose to be here. I wasn't given a choice whether to be born. So is it fair that I wasn't asked to be here and then I come to earth, become a human, and if I don't accept Christ, I go to hell and burn forever or, I go, or I have to accept and go to heaven. How is that fair? He said, well, let me tell you a story, a parable. He said, if you were taken in a boat, taken out in the middle of the ocean, and you didn't ask to be taken out there, but you, you had to go, you were forced to go, and then the boat sank, and you're swimming, paddling through water, you know, treading water, and you're going to drown if you don't get some help. And all of a sudden, a boat shows up and says, hey, come on, get in. Are you going to sit there and go, well, I, it's, I'm not supposed to be here. I didn't have a choice to be here. I'm in this water, have, you know, drowning, but... It, I didn't, I didn't have a choice. So are you going to do that and complain about it while you drowned? Or are you going to say, thank you, let me get in the boat with you and be saved? Okay, it's a rhetorical question. The thing is, Christ says, you're here because I put you here because I have that authority and I have that right to create who I choose to. Put you here. You didn't ask God if you could be born, but you're here. Not of your own, not of your own choice, not of your own choosing. You didn't choose our parents. So, while we're here, he's offering get in the boat to be saved or drown. It's a choice. Again, it's a, it's a revolutionary choice in love. Okay, let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and I'll stop here. If you have any questions, go to pray5org at gmail.com. That's the numerical five. And if you would, please share this. Um, and if you, if you want to contact me and you want to talk about something else, uh, feel free to go to the same website, pray5.org, and it has my email address on there, or just go to pray5.org at gmail.com and ask to speak with me, or you can contact me on Facebook Messenger. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to have a conversation with her in, in, when we type it out, or we can con I'll contact you if, if you wish, okay? We'll see you next week. Uh, go out and spread the gospel and tell somebody about Jesus Christ.